Oh, I didn't see you there. I was too busy blocking my eyes from this laser. Pew, pew. I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to have a laser. It's okay. I'll use it for good. So you might be thinking to yourself, what, what does this video have to do with a laser engraver, Tom? You're, you're driving. Um, and that is true. And I'm not going to use my laser engraver uh, inside a car. That sounds like a recipe for an explosion. By the way, I haven't used this laser engraver yet, and I'm deathly afraid of um, an explosion. Am I going the wrong way? No, I'm going the right way. Um, Basically, I got this laser engraver like two, maybe even three months ago at this point. Uh, I, I got it sent for free in exchange for this video, so in that sense it's sponsored, but I'm going to say whatever I want to say about it. Uh, I got it like two or three months ago, and I've been dodging making a video about it, mostly because uh, all the equipment for it, like the metal thing that makes sure it doesn't like burn through the table and whatever, um, all of that and like the wires, the charging thing, is all inside this car. And right now, I'm driving my girlfriend's car and trying to escape this hospital uh, parking lot that we're inside. Um, I need to get this bag to get the laser engraver working, and I've also kind of been dodging this uh, video because I was kind of waiting for like Black Friday time to do it anyways, because uh, that's when I'm gonna do all these like product things, but I've never used a laser engraver before, so for that, I am excited. Let me get out of this parking lot one second. The card that you use to get out of the parking lot doesn't exist, but the good news is I did find the bag. Well, forget about this football. I did find the bag of stuff that I need uh, for the uh, x pool chargers, carbon scrubber, I might just have to walk home, which is fine, but... I've come back from my place, which I'm not engraving there because the <clears throat> smoke detector is so sensitive and they don't like you to take it off. You could breathe too hard and the smoke detector would go off. So I brought the engraver. Uh, I went on the bus to get here and uh, this woman in front of me is like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, it's a laser engraver. And we talked about it. And then she's like, what do you do for a job? Why do you have a laser engraver? And I hate that question because no youtuber likes to say there's a youtube that they, they are a youtuber there's a <coughs> bit of a stigma that i feel like maybe that's just how i feel about it but that's not a question i enjoy answering so i'm, I'm just like yeah i teach like 3d animation and sometimes you know <laughs> and then she's like how much did it cost and i'm like and then she's like did you buy it yourself i'm like not really <laughs> But I didn't want to talk about like sponsorships and all that. So here's the situation. I got some cardboard that I put off to the side. Uh, technically, you can engrave that kind of stuff. But, but I realized that I have the authority, or really I'm just allowed, to engrave this big piece of wood. Which not only is a bigger like surface area, so I can do like multiple tests on this thing. If I can get it out. But, like, engraving on wood is much cooler, and it has two different colors. It has the uh, black and then the brown, or, like, more of a natural grain. I'm going to start with this, because I feel like it's a little easier to see. And I need to set up this engraver for the first time. I did already construct it, and overall, not hard at all to construct. Okay, so I'm going to put it here, and I'll get some closer camera angles in a second. Don't you worry about it, but I'm just going to vaguely set this thing up so that it ain't too tall. Okay, I figured out what to do if this thing is like too high up so the legs aren't contacting. And would you believe it? I'm going to show you how to fix it. So assuming 
Let's do it like this. Uh, assuming that this is too high, what you want to do is you want to loosen this screw. The issue is, once you go too far, it's hit the wall. What are you going to do? Well, you can pull it out. Let me get close up. You pull it out, you rotate it, and then you can uh, keep going. So yeah, you see it just got weakened. So what are we going to do? Put that there. Uh, what are we going to do? We are going to now use this loosened fact uh, to actually level it. So you are going to bring down this little stick, which tells you exactly uh, what the distance should be. That's cool. And then you're going to tighten it by doing exactly the reverse of what I just showed you. Meaning you can pop that up and now um, it's level and it can slide and do everything. Okay, so now the question is, can I power it and link it to my computer and engrave something magical? Okay, power, power off. Would you believe power on? Okay, so that I suppose is where the laser is centered or something like that. That is, uh, we're going to bring that into the software and try to make something of it. Now, one of the things that is included in this bag somewhere is these. These are um, glasses to make sure you do not burn your eyeballs. It's important to be safe when using a laser engraver. So, <laughs> the reason I'm not opening it normally is because I have one hand on the camera. This is what safety looks like. Everything is green. So now I'm going to elect, I think there's like an SD card option as well, uh, but I'm going to elect to uh, connect our thing via, I always forget what this is called. Is it called like USB-A or something like that? I don't know. I'm going to do my best to solve this third grade puzzle of how to fit a shape into another shape. And then I'm going to put this here. And now I think it's just a matter of downloading the software. So I'm going to try to find the software. I know there's two options. One of them is something called like Lightburn, um, which I hear is the advanced one, but I'm just going uh, to use my like, you know, basic tool. And, okay, it's a download for Windows. But it seems like it's very simple, right? Like we just like send over an image or like an SVG or whatever it may be and uh, do it. Let's install. Yes. Take over my computer. Take it. I guess I don't need to wear these glasses yet. But may maybe some people say that the uh, screens we look at, laptops, TVs, the one you're looking at right now, emits like blue light or something like that, which I don't think is wrong. I just, maybe it's not a, as big of a deal as people like claim that it is. Anyways, um, so I know that the X tool, the driver required for your device is missing. Click install to install it. Okay. I know the X tool has like two options. Like one of them is to kind of like engrave a, or like etch a sketch into it, uh, which is what we are going to do. Another option is to straight up cut materials, uh, which I will not be doing uh, because I don't have a good setup for that. I don't have like a, um, you know, a workbench or something like that. Okay, the device is connected. Let's see if I can connect this device. Oh, and apparently has Wi-Fi and Ethernet and all this. Okay, X tool. That's the one. Uh, the new firmware. Okay. How much must we install, sir? And while I wait for this to install, I did mention. And let me go get it. I did mention that I had a, a carbon scrubber. I don't think this is like super important for everybody, but because um, I don't want to set off the fire alarm. And I really don't know how much smoke this emits. We'll find out. Uh, I got a carbon scrubber. What it does is it's basically a fan or maybe it's a vacuum that sucks up the smoke near it. 
and you put in one of these carbon filters uh, that, I think it already has one, uh, that scrubs the carbon or something like that. And now I think it's just a matter of like making a design. So we're gonna start off like super simple, maybe like a one inch design or something like that. And it centers where you put that cross. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just make some text that maybe says, let's see, maybe what should our first word be? I, I kind of want to do anti-establishmentarianism. That's the longest word I know. My dad taught it to me. Very important information that I carry to this day. Uh, let's try to do, let's try to do an important number like one six one eight. This is the first, or you know what? Why not put one point six one eight? These are the first four digits of the golden ratio, I believe. So I'm going to center this. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's the essence of it. And by the way, uh, it seems like we can actually like literally determine the size of this because I guess this could be interpreted many ways. Maybe this is a square foot size design uh, in millimeters. So 100 millimeters is a centimeter. Um, I'm going to go with this. It seems like a very small thing to start. And once I know that that works, then I'm comfortable uh, continuing. Okay, the framing function is ready. Press the button on the device to start framing and press it again uh, to perform framing once more. Let me get the camera on this. It's flashing. Click. Oh shit. Laser module moved over the position limit. Oops, the laser module has moved over the position limit, which may cause device failure. Device has stopped working. Please deal with it as soon as possible. Okay, I'll figure it out. Chill. Chill. Let's figure out what that was about. Pretty sure there are cables that I literally did not connect in the assembly. Where did I put these cables? I don't like that there's extra cables. That that I should fix. I'm, I'm gonna go do that. So it was this little cable that I did not connect, which makes sense because I think this is what's called the limit switcher, uh, which tells it where the position of it is. If it's not connected, how can we expect it to work? Caveman versus laser continues. Blah. That was literally the issue. So if I go to framing now, and then I hit the button, no beeps. So what this tells me is maybe read this piece of instruction manual. It could help you. And now, unless I made another mistake, which is possible, uh, let's try to actually engrave this thing. So we have our text. Um, I can score it, engrave it, or cut it. Definitely not cut it. I want to engrave it, which will make it solid, which makes sense, because now I need to fill in an area, not just an outline. By the way, I just noticed if I'm using the engrave type, I have it set at 1% power, which, I don't know, doesn't seem right to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the material to, I don't know, I, I guess I have some kind of wood, right? So... Uh, wood phone stand, wood coaster. I mean, wood coaster is kind of similar to what I have. I mean, it's just a solid piece of wood. Um, okay, you know what? It's a wood coaster. And now if I go to my thing, it's using, okay, it's using not 1% power. That sounds good to me. The reason I set this up where I did is it's close to the porch, which means proper ventilation. <laughs> Uh, in case there is smoke, I mean, I'm talking about it like it's a big deal. I think this thing just generates smoke. It depends on what material you cut. So, glasses on. I'm going to get my... <laughs> Too many wires with my recording setup. Too many wires. Uh, I'm going to get this carbon scrubber ready. And actually, I can use this for other things. I use this, like, cooking device in my kitchen that, like, air fries things. And let me tell you, anything I do with it, no, I want the light. Anything I do with it will just trigger the smoke alarm. So this would be useful, too. Okay. Carbon scrubber. Scrub with me. And now, let's see how this thing works. Okay, this one's easy, I just turn it on. So now that we have our very sophisticated setup, I'm gonna try to get this working. I'm gonna click process. Can I like move this live? 
Oh, it's moving. Uh, press the button when we are ready. Also, I want to mention that I think this carbon scrubber hype I was uh, talking about is a little bit overblown. Maybe it's because I'm not making, like, the Mona Lisa over here to scale. But, um, at least an open window is fine, honestly. Okay, so while this laser engraver is running, and this gives you a sense of pretty much how loud it is. Not too loud, and to be honest, I think I accidentally made the, uh... 1.618 a bit bigger than I intended. I need to pander, that's a necessary part of the process, so yes, I will do the Blender logo. Blender rules, wow, better than Autodesk. Very fun. But beyond that, I need to come up with a plan that I think is good. So for this section where we're doing something that wasn't the 1.618, I tried to do a screen recording and the audio came out like this. There it, there is. it is. There, <laughs> there's the, uh, the uh, evidence. Which, yes, does mean there are two of me, but in this case, not good, not good at all. So I'll just describe what I did in this narration. So if you're part of the, if you know about the CG Matter lore, let's say it like that, uh, then you know that recently I revealed that I was on the Dr. Phil show. It was a big deal. It was on all the newspapers, the magazines. <laughs> and uh, I thought I'd take the image where I'm actually in the Dr. Phil show. Um, and that is what I would end up engraving. So that's what you're about to see. So unfortunately, my laptop died halfway through this thing because it wasn't plugged in. Thank you so much. But um, I think I think the point is proven. It would have just kept going. Uh, but that, that's some real detail. And I promised that I'd do one more, the Blender logo. But I want to try it on a uh, more interesting material. More specifically, I want to try some cardboard because I watched some like videos of people doing it and it did not seem to catch on fire as long as you engrave it. Okay, so while this is level, I think I do need to make it higher because cardboard doesn't have much friction against my uh, table or by table, I mean piece of wood. So I'm just going to make it just the tiniest bit higher. I, of course, that will mean that this is going to be like slightly out of focus, but I'm gonna try to barely change anything. And now I can glide over it and it's barely hovering over. Okay, so I gotta make a tiny logo and it's going to be the Blender logo. Judge it for yourself. That is badass. I can see myself making a product line. I don't know what that would be. Probably not using the Blender logo. They don't like that, but that's pretty cool. Okay, so we're at the point where we are now. I was actually editing and now I'm filming this last part. I just want to say, of course, at the end, if I made, if I did not make it abundantly clear, this video is sponsored in the sense that they sent me this engraver for free. I've never touched an engraver, so that was my process and learning it and uh, trying it and showing it, etc. Of course, they want you to buy this thing, and if it's something you're interested in, there are links in the description. Uh, they, they are affiliate links, and what that means, if you don't know, is they should give me a certain percentage of the revenue of that sale. I don't really know what that percentage is, but if you see that as a good thing, a bad thing, keep that in mind. But uh, there are links in the description for the engraver. I believe there's 10 watt, which is what I have, 20 watt and 40 watt versions. So you could get a way more powerful one if that interests you. Um...